talking about reminders and clubs and stuff the december lineup for Burkhan has been released it just dropped butter it just dropped hot off the shelves Burkhan december lineup has just dropped and i'm pumped and eager and ready to dive on deep now from what i understand the month in the head always comes this yeah i think if you want to see the january set list or lineup you have to wait until December the 6th. I think it comes after the 6th, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm mistaken, who knows? But I think that's how it works. That's how people time knowing when to kind of check the website. It always comes after the 6th, I think so. Um, so, you know, if you want to check in advance, always check the, the you know on the 6th day before the month you want to go. So, December's out already. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? There's a lot of talk around Bergen at the moment about whether it's going to close or not. Loads of rumours going around. I dispelled some of those because of what I've been told or heard. I've heard other rumours now that conflict against it. Who really knows what's going out there? But there's no point of putting out conflicting, non-sourced, non-credible information just to confuse people and get people upset and angry. Just enjoy the space for what it is and what it's able to offer. And I've also seen way more dissenting voices about Bergen as a space overall, which I'm really curious to dive into i actually might load up an actual um image of it of somebody speaking about it actually the other day i think that business techno shared because i'm really curious to see how the clubbing community overall or just the operators in the scene whoever they are approach it going forward because clearly it feels like there is maybe an appetite for something else who knows what the something else is maybe these rumors are just coming out of left field but i feel like when people start talking like this about you people start count i know it happens every year it's happened since this club has been popular but it feels like nowadays people kind of disparaging the place or especially people who are from berlin basically making it a point to let you know they never go there and they go to all these other places it feels like the cool kids are maybe falling out of love with it it feels like a lot of the normies are kind of getting involved with it it may be heading in a more commercial route who knows um but it feels like there's something in the air. People are kind of, it feels like, praying and hoping for the Bergheim's downfall, which is, you know, what is what it is. But I want to know what people actually want to replace it. What's the future going forward? Because if there is going to be a handing over of the guard, there needs to be something else that replaces it. Because at the moment, for me, there's nothing else in the scene out there that is, comes up to this. Like, in terms of, and again, it's never usually about the nights and people that go there. It's about the consistency. You can go here every single weekend and have a splendid night from the Artello Rama night to the FC Snacks night. Like, there's continual, absolute bangers of nights and people playing and that's i think the major part people kind of lose of it like say what you want about the entry policy the security whatever else or the people that go there but the range of people that play week in week out you can't find anywhere else you could just go there blindly so what's going to replace it how they're going to replace it it's going to be a hard road to go down who knows but anyway december 2022 lineup is out i tell a rama bar night like crazy crazy good lineup i love the name Obviously, most of the people playing there, if not all, are going to be Itella Disco Fanatics. Um, you got Kendall Live, DJ Katana, Emil Doesn't Drive, Frinda Del Lanco, back to back with Hendrik Stein and, Ste and Sesto Senso. The one thing I'm interested in as well, because I used to love playing Itella Disco back in the day and flipping Dawson basement bars or whatnot. You don't really see many kind of black DJs playing this type of music. In it. I wonder why that is. Is there, is there a scene of black art because there's a lot of kind of really cool cuts for, that use kind of black vocals and shit or black musician vocals sorry in some of their records especially if you get into the italo house type of stuff but the italo disco scene um is very flamboyant it's very kind of exuberant very out there um it's very groovy right it kind of makes you want to dance um, which is not something you can say for a lot of dance music. It really does have a bop to it. It's a wonder why there's not many more black people that actually kind of DJ that type of stuff. Even just disco overall. Maybe the disco overall is not a good term because there's many people in places like Peckham and shit that play disco all the time. But when it comes to Itella Disco, I wonder what it is about that genre of music that doesn't necessarily call for black people to play. Obviously, maybe you don't want to play it. You know, I'm not going to play that music wearing a Versace shirt and a handlebar moustache, right? And loads of really expertly placed tattoos and shit. That's probably not what I'm going to be doing but um i still think it's a genre of music that we could absolutely crush but we don't i wonder why that is who knows um the following night um september the sorry um december the third on the saturday you've got an sc snacks united <laughs> which is hilarious um 
and then you've got uh, sp- st- dress code on this is strictly dress sneakers and sportswear so if you're the kind of gay dude that's into that kind of whole sportswear vibe which I didn't know was a thing I remember going to a few hashtags on Twitter and stuff and finding some pretty wild stuff about some of the things that gay guys are into in terms of guys who wear that who kind of have a chavvy look about them the shaved heads the TNs the really tight tracksuits the white socks um, that kind of look is really popular with some gay guys and they absolutely love it so clearly that's going to be an absolutely mad one um, the athletes party at flipping what's it think uh, Lab and Bergheim is going to be men only play safe and in that lineup they've got LSD XOX they've got Luigi De Verni they've got Partox in Laboratory which is the which is the predominantly the gay room which I've never actually been in actually even when the I think the Club Sylvester opened I think they're going there no, I didn't I think they're going there I might have gone in there I'm not too sure but I've never actually seen what it looks like on the inside so that's an interesting one to check out well my own eyes I've seen the pictures but not my own eyes but laboratory on that night is going to be Chris Cruz Grace Sands Stat This and Wes Bagley that's going to be a pretty sick affair as well to be honest December you know when you're meant to be with your family and stuff you're going to go to SC Snacks Parade woo dirty then the following then the follow then the same sorry then the same Saturday oh look at that so I guess it's on the same weekend they got SC Snacks on Bergheim and then I guess they're going to close it and then you're going to be able to go to the main room and see these people playing Um, it feels like Daria Kovalsa is playing like so often at Bergheim is she now a resident or something because I know that the boyfriend or husband is right in terms of Etab Kyle but is she a resident there because I feel like she plays there so often these days um, anyway uh, Bergheim uh, Asun Tag I've been okay so I guess this is what Saturday after 7 after 5 or something right or it's closed or something maybe that's what it means it's closed I'm not just sure what that what, what, what does that mean Sun Tag da, 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 da. let's see if I can look that up uh, search where is it Let's see if we can translate this. I don't really know what this means. Berghain Ab Sontag Abend 17 Uru. Something about the hour. Let's see if I can do a translation of this. Ooh. Oh man. Google Translate. Because I'm pretty sure it's something to do with that, right? Oh, no, not that. Uh, let's go back to it again. It's this. And then where is this? That one, right? Let's go. Okay, so Bergheim from Sunday. Sontag is Sunday. Jesus Christ. I should actually know this stuff. Isn't it? I go to Berlin often enough. I should know my flipping Monday to flipping Saturday Sundays. What is it actually? Um, so I guess from Bergheim Sunday evening from 5 p.m. But let's see. What is it? German Monday to Sunday. What is it? Okay, cool. Let's see. Days of the week in German. I should actually know this because I go there often enough, like I said. So, um, Sunday, Sonntag. Monday, Montag. Tuesday, Dienstag. Wednesday, Mittwoch. Mittwoch is Wednesday. I would have never guessed that, man. Don- Donnerstag. It's Thursday. Donnerstag. Donnerstag. Um, Friday, Fre- Freitag. And then Saturday is Sonabend, Sonabend, or Zoomstag, Zoomstag or Sonabend. Okay, Jesus Christ, that's a mad pronunciation. But anyway, let's go back to the lineup. So in that one, you've got Marcel Dietman playing live on the third, Dario Kovosa, Kolosova, Freddie K, Matrix Man. Panorama Bar, you've got Carry Star, DJ Fart in the club. That's an absolutely amazing name. Job Jobs. Job Jobsy, sorry, um, Kili, Kiki Kalomo, Kiki Lomo, Palms Tracks, Paula Tape and Tear. And then on the following weekend, you've got Refugee Worldwide, um, which is Bradley Zero, back to back with Sally C, No Plastic, back to back with Richard Ab, Arbington, Stella Zerki, and Yang Sung. And then the following weekend, which is probably the standout one, this is December the 10th, might be the standout lineup. 100% the stand-up lineup. Look at this. You've got three rooms open. Bergheim, Panorama and Hull. The, the, the Hull night is where they put all the gigs, I'm assuming. I've been there before. I went there during the Club Sylvester. That was a fucking amazing space. Um, so, from Bergheim, you've got Terence Fixum alive. Ben Clock, Boris, Francois, Francois X, Josie Rebel, Big Up in the UK, Justin Perry, Steffi and Surgeon, 
Paramabar, you've got Miss Kitten, also goes by Kitten now, and The Hacker going live. That album, if you haven't got it already, please check it out. You've got Ad- Agina playing, you've got Arm playing on Paramabar, Cassie, Fred P, Lakuti, and Balkema, Tamasomo, and Virginia. <sighs> The only thing that's missing there, apparently, by Steffi to make it an all rounder. Then in How Bar, you in How Main Room, you've got DJ Gigola, you've got Key Cliff Live, you've got Labour Live, you've got Alexander, you've got Claudio PRC, you've got Nick Nack, and the Seventh Plane. That is an absolute heavy night. So if you're planning on going in December, please note these dates are going to be crazy in terms of going there. They're going to be so full. People are going to be paying top dollar to go there. I actually want to check and see how much flights are there at that time anyway. Let me see what they're saying. Because I'm assuming they're going to be super, super expensive to go. Airbnbs are going to be through the roof. But if you do want to go on that December, let me see if I can check one out there. As you can see, some of the uh, dates on there that I'm already checking out myself. So let's go here, scan down to London Stansted. That's where I'll be going from. And then I'll be obviously going to Berlin, Bradenburg. This airport is so annoying now. I definitely prefer the other one, but hey, let's say that right the better. Let's say you're going to go on a weekend. So it'll be December 9th for leaving and then returning on the Monday the 12th. Oops. Go right there again, your Monday 12th. So that's done, right? And then boom, return flight. Let's see how much it's going for. Let's see on that bang storming weekend. That bit is going to be crazy. Oh, look at that. £116. This is without even flipping bags and shit already it's that much and look at the difference in terms of the saturday crazy and then on the way back is 60 okay it's a bit cheaper coming back but still absolute brutal to go there that night and you know that weekend it's going to be an absolute arm and a leg so it's definitely definitely crazy but that is one of the better lineups i've seen in a very very long time um no idea when the club Sylvester is going to happen so if anyone does actually know the club Sylvester is usually the new year's day kind of event sort of stuff because it falls on a weird time in it because friday's new friday's the third then yeah new year's eve is on like saturday and then new year's day is on the sunday so i wonder if they're going to open specifically the club the sylvester stuff and start it on the sunday and have it go all the way through the week or will they start in the following week weekend instead in the general i'm not too sure so if anyone has any idea please let me know in the comments down below um after the 10th of the barn summer on that friday you then got ad for 93 i feel like these panorama bars on a friday are a bit of an undercover success i'd love to go to them but again i don't have time to go too much on the fridays i always have to leave on a saturday but this night on the 16th of december is nice too you got an Anu Naku playing Minor Science, Shannon SP and Willow. Willow I'm a big fan of. So that should be pretty sick as well, Panama Bar. Then the following day you've got uh Burkai on the seventeenth, you've got Aku playing, Bestie Hera, DJ P or DJ P I saw play a fucking uh Paloma Bar back to back with what's his face? Oh, with the guy that I flip in love. And I forgot his complete name that does a powerhouse. So he's really cool to go and check out. Marina, Nini H is always good. Orlando Vaughan, Pramble State playing, awesome. Pramble, you got Bin, um, the South Korean legend. Is that South Korean legend? That, 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 that is her, right, Bin? Bin's a South Korean girl, right? If I'm not mistaken, or am I mistaken? Am I mistaken? Yeah, I am mistaken. It's not the same person. I'm looking at somebody else. Who's Bin? Who's Bin? Okay, well they're Asian. That's 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 a start. <laughs> but I don't think they're South Korean. But anyway, regardless, big up Bin. So Bin <laughs> Bin's playing there. Let's go back again. Bin's there. Um then you got Brian Kessler, Dasko, Dinky, Gono, Nat Wilder, and Seth Troxner playing. Ooh, interesting. Seth Troxner playing at Panorama Bar. Wow. It's interesting booking because I would imagine because they always do this anyway. They always have like they'll have like a really commercial person playing in the Panama Bar in general, or maybe Bergan to kind of mix things up a bit. They've had Solomon play. I've said before I've heard DJ Harvey play. That was one of my best nights I've ever been in Bergan the team. DJ Harvey smashed that main room. It was incredible. What a privilege! And obviously Seth Trucks are playing now, but it's interesting with Seth because I feel like Seth's at his most commercial ever probably now. And unfortunately, someone like myself, who's a huge fan of his and was obsessed with him when he was coming up and would watch all his interviews and would hang on his every word and would be, you know, aggressively pointing my phone towards the laptop trying to get his flipping tune ideas of his tracks he was playing when he used to play vinyl only. Like, I love that guy, but we can't deny that he's not the same DJ he was before. Like, he's not as good anymore. I don't know if it's because he's over it 
because he's maybe hit his ceiling but the the Seth Chokeser that I was kind of obsessive as a fan growing up is definitely a different I won't say growing up because I don't think he's even that older that that old compared to me or whatever but still um the only problem I said like I said like his ability to play has gone somewhat down and also his fame has gone super high so he's quite commercial you you would describe him as so it's pretty interesting that they're booking him to be honest it's similar to them booking flipping black coffee do you know what i mean um obviously black coffee is you know uh maybe productions are maybe hitting a bit better nowadays because obviously they fall in that kind of sound bracket everyone wants to hear now but interesting booking nonetheless so that should be cool and then on the 25th of december they're open on christmas bloody day crazy and um, finally, the Xmas, they've got um, David um, Elick McPlaying, Mary Moxtermere, who I've been raving about for a while. She's absolutely incredible. They've got Partock playing, Roy Perez, who I've always got good things to say about. And then the 30th, 30th club now, she got all these flaws open, which I'm pretty sure this might be the Club Sylvester, maybe. That might be the one. This might be, so it might be Club Sylvester from the 30th to the 31st to the 1st to the 2nd. It might go all the way through. I think so. Think about it now. I think that's what they might do. So it might not be what I want because I want to go and party from the first all the way until the sixth. But I think they might just do it from the first, or whatever. And then I think sometimes they close on January. So am I not mistaken? Do they sometimes close the January afterwards, or am I not? Or am I mistaken? Let me see if I can select a random year pre-pandemic. Let's go for 2019. Let's see January 2019. Or yeah, or yeah, let's do January 2019. Did they close before that? No, they don't. They are okay, They reopen straight away. So, I guess the the thirty first was before that. Oh no! See, look. Hmm. Okay, so this is okay on a Tuesday, and they did it randomly on a Tuesday. On the two thousand nineteenth, they did their New Year's Day party on the Tuesday, all the way through. Crazy, isn't it? All the way through to Wednesday, I'm assuming, or Thursday. And then they closed that following weekend and they came back again the following. Okay, cool. So I guess after the Sylvester. So what I'm basically thinking is that that weekend after. So if we get the calendar, calendar 2022, I think that weekend that I want to go, especially for the New Year's Day thing. So this is 2022. So the event that they're putting on, if I'm not mistaken put this around over here it's gonna be on the 30th so let's go back here again let's get this up on the screen so that's the 30th so i'm assuming the party that they want to do the new year's day thing will probably happen all the way through will probably happen there on the sunday which is the first of january all the way until probably wednesday or something or tuesday and then that follow and then that same they're basically that week of January, this one. So I am assuming it's gonna close on that weekend from the sixth to the eighth. So it probably won't be open that weekend, I'm assuming. Sixth, seventh, eighth, um, January of of twenty twenty three. I'm assuming that's gonna be the case. That's what they're probably gonna end up doing. Maybe I'm wrong, who knows? But I assume that'll probably be the uh, the uh, tie they'll probably go for. But I'd love to go, man. Maybe on a Sunday, I might go do a little quick one all the way through. Who knows? But that'll be a good time to duck out and go. But yeah, incredibly good lineup in December, as per usual. No surprise. They always flip and kill it. Looks like they're not going to closing anytime soon. So for people that are wishing and praying on the Berg's demise, you're going to have to wish on a bloody star, mate. You're going to have to keep wishing on a star.